a uh, poster of Ozinsensky back there, a photo of the gather last gathering, uh, last gathering of the poets, and uh, Baraka here, and a poster for the Dutchman, Shelley, Byron, what a room. This is kind of temple. Um, so, <clears throat> mine's not very biblical. <laughs> Unless, of course, Wichita is purgatory. Uh, the City Library of Wichita. The City Library of Wichita? For no reason that I ever known was it Golconda of almost all, if not all, New Directions books published before I was a high school senior. I learned to wander the stacks and spot the New Direction books as a special, a special among the others. I was checking out, I remember, one day, as I was renewing Pound's Cantos. A librarian asked, do you understand that stuff? Sure, I said, popping the book into my coat pocket and wheeled blithely through the brass revolving door into the sunlight. Back to my 12th grade class, I guess. Many books and libraries later, when I met Jay Laughlin, he was a long established icon and highest personal hero in my pantheon. My first book that Jay published is September Blackberries, which was beautifully edited by Peter Glasgow, and I'll read a poem from it tonight. And many books later, my last book, my most recent book from New Directions, was shaped by Declan Spring. Yeah, Mysterioso is another poem. And I want to say, Thank you, Jay, <clears throat> Griselda, uh, Peter, Declan, Lori, Peggy, and everybody over the years and into the future who keeps New Directions flowing and swirling. <clears throat> Often standing in this room, I would see and sometimes have conversations with Philip Lamontia. When Philip was 15, Andre Breton declared Philip was the great surrealist American poet. Philip Lamontia died about five years ago. Philip Lamontia's poem for Nancy Peters. And when I quote in here, the quote is from a poem of Philip Lamontia. Is this making funny sounds? <laughs> Goodbye. You know, Gangara is the uh, Spanish poet from the same period of, uh, of uh, Shakespeare. And uh, he, he was as complex and as beautiful. How is it now? It's better. Better. It's better. better. Many layered as, uh, as Mallarmé, the French symbolist poet. And uh, Gangora was one of Philip Lamontia's favorite poets. Good. And it's called Philip Lamontia's poem for Nancy Peters. Goodbye, handsome Gangora of San Francisco. I think you're the end. Goodbye, handsome Gangora of San Francisco. Quote, I think you're the end, the greatest poet of your kind. You are the poet's poet of the greatest poet's poet poet, as you wrote in a poem. You split beauty into slivers to build the sleek ship of state that carries ashes and large eyes of cinnamon and musk. After your adventures and travel, we would sit around them listening and watching the scarlet ribbons of your voice move in the sea green foam of the air. You are the model for 10,000 generations of the poet we believe in, and we believe still. Now, you are as solid as the wounds of the Christos in a fiery spoon of morphine on a morning of masses drop dripping through funnels into the first silk tint of their alchemy. Real, real life and life. Your beauty blesses you. And this is Mysterioso 8, also from Mysteriosos. 
shaped and edited by Devlin Spring. I like this poem because it appeared in the Miami Herald. <laughs> Can you imagine the Mr. and Mrs. Miami having breakfast? <laughs> Herald, this poem here called Black Arisen to Black Roses is Voices. Oh yeah. What's, what, what, what's that like, Ethel? Well, would you read it? <laughs> anyway, here's the poem. <clears throat> Black. Arisen to black roses, his voices between petals. The yellow centers with anthers begin with black. Lonely, sweet as honey, overpopulated by blossoms and petals. Consciousness narrowly streams like a nematode, muscularly between plastics and hunks of manufactured thought. Through the births of new hatreds, poisonous as ever, Greedy for ignorance as a sitcom. And we stretch in this bed, touching shoulders, just as whales and mice do. And here's my first book, published by New Directions and by Jay and all those hardworking lovers of writing and literature and poetry. And I'm going to read a poem, just read one poem from it and surrender the podium. Um, and this is a poem on a vision by Robert Duncan. <clears throat> on a vision by Robert Duncan. The rats in the honey are kings tuned in the golden sweetness. Thunder can ruffle their fur in the liquid sugar. Streams of memory flow by with minnows and water striders at the base of the mausoleum. Deer drink there. A bear passes. Raccoons leave footprints in the mud by the water press. There are cyclones. Lightning circles the moon. The roots of the tomb reach into the Paleolithic and beyond to join with the single being and out into stars and beyond them to nebulae that vibrate to bees building honey. A cell. And then another. And another. Of all colors, odors, tastes, touches. A cell. And another. One more. And another. 